Hello, and welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Today we've been asked to address what is a qualified person according to the National Electrical Code, or NEC, NFPA 70E, and NFPA 70B. So for my desktop here, I want to navigate to the 2023 National Electrical Code and go into Article 100, which contains the definitions. And if we scroll down the list on the left-hand side here, I want to get to the Q. Qualified person. So if we click on that, it will bring it up. And what we see, the definition is one who has skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of the electrical equipment and installations and has received safety training to recognize and avoid the hazards involved. So essentially they have to have skills and knowledge uh, around the specific equipment that they're working on or the installation that they're doing and have received safety training in order to be able to do that work safely. Now, within the enhanced content in link, you can see that's already open here, uh, it references NFPA 70E uh, for providing training requirements for qualified and unqualified persons who might be exposed to electrical hazards. So 70E is what we're going to utilize uh, to, to give that training to those individuals. Now, so let's go to 70E and look at the definition for that. In 70E, same thing, we're going to go into Article 100, scroll down to Qualified Person, and we'll see it's similar to the NEC definition, but it's a little bit different. There's a couple words in here that I'll point out at the end, but let's go through it first. So, a Qualified Person, according to NFPA 70E, is one who has demonstrated skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of electrical equipment and installations, and has received safety training to identify the hazards and reduce the associated risk. So a couple key parts here. The first one's right at the beginning in the fact that they have to demonstrate the skills and knowledge related to the construction and operation of the equipment or installation. So where the NEC said they have to have those skills and knowledge, 70E is specifically requiring that those skills and knowledge have been demonstrated. And typically that demonstration is going to take place to an employer because they're ultimately the one who's responsible for the safety of the individual that's working on the equipment. Um, so with that, uh, you know, they're going to have to have those skills demonstrated that that person is capable of doing that. Now the second piece to this, again, is receiving that safety training to identify the hazards, but 70E takes it a step further in requiring that the qualified person must be able to reduce their associated risk with that. So not only do they have to have the safety training, they also have to know how to reduce that specific risk that they have based on doing that task. So that's where there's a little bit of variation between the two. Now, if we move on to 70B and take a look, definitions in 70B are located in chapter three. Uh, and there's a few different breakdowns here. We're gonna go into the general definitions. And if we scroll down to the Q, and you'll notice in 70B, we've got numbers as well um, for that. Um, but we're gonna go down to Q, and here we are. So. I'm going to jump right to the end of this definition for qualified person in 70B and see that the end here references 70E, the 2021 edition. Uh, so with that, um, it is using the exact same definition that was found in the 2021 uh, 70E. Okay, so it's a mirror image of it. Um, now we just looked at 70E and it was the 2024 because that edition had come out um, after the 2023 edition of 70B has been. So there's there's a little kind of staging here between uh, the three year cycles between the NEC, 70E and 70B, where you may see a specific edition referenced and there may be a new one that's out there, um, which is the case this time. But that definition hasn't been changed. Um, it's still the same and you still, you can see it's highlighted here because prior um, to the 2023 70B, so back to the 2019 edition when it was still, um, a uh, recommended practice instead of a standard, uh, it used a definition that was more in tune with 
the NEC's definition and it didn't have those components of demonstration and reducing the associated risk. Uh, so that's a little bit of a change there. So what's important to talk about in all of this is that what is not a qualified person. So what is not a qualified person is someone who just has uh, necessarily has electrical experience. Uh, it has to be within the specific realm of what they're doing. Um, so for example, uh, a residential based electrician that's done residential their entire career is likely not a position that's going to be qualified uh, to go on and do uh, some medium voltage work um, in, a, in a, a, a building that contains that. So it's very important that we keep in mind that uh, experience uh, uh, as a whole does not necessarily uh, make you a qualified person and typically doesn't and also licensure licensure doesn't uh, make you a qualified person now if we go back to 70e and look at the um, enhanced content there it gives you a little more of that information so if you ever want to take a look at this in link uh, get some more context, maybe talking to an employer, or maybe you are an employer and you want to understand this a little bit better. Um, you can go down into this, and if we look at like this third paragraph, it says many state and local government licensing programs have training requirements that must be met for a person to be considered qualified. So that's one piece. They're qualified, they may be a journeyman or a master electrician. Uh, but the applicant must be examined initially and then periodically after procuring the license. The license in and of itself, and I'm going to highlight this here because this is important, the license in and of itself does not make a person qualified under the requirements of NFPA 70E for all the tasks or equipment they may encounter. Uh, so we just gave that example of a residential electrician that may be doing more commercial or industrial based work that they've never done before. Uh, they could have 20 years as a residential electrician and that's not going to qualify them um, as a qualified person. Um, so that kind of gives us an overview according to all three of those codes and standards uh, as to what a qualified person is. We hope that provided some insight into what it means to be a qualified person based on the National Electrical Code, NFPA 70E and NFPA 70B. For more info about how NFPA Link gives you the knowledge that you need to get the job done right, please visit www.nfpa.org forward slash link.